six and a half years, this place has never hosted this game. It is the AFC Championship game. This place is electric. It was big time. I mean, a lot of the guys hadn't been in the AFC Championship game. They hadn't played one at Arrowhead uh, in 50, 50 years or whatever it was. And so for us, we were, we were super excited to have that opportunity. The Chiefs are right in the thick of it, baby! Damian Williams into the end zone! And the Chiefs regain the lead. We felt like we had the talent to get the job done, and it was um, it was pretty um, I was uh, gosh. Leaving an opponent speechless was common for the Patriots dynasty. Fires it near side, the pass deflected and intercepted. But a penalty. Offside, defense over 55. The Chiefs thought they had an interception to win it, but an offside penalty neutralizes the interception. New England took advantage of another chance. In overtime, they made sure the Chiefs' offense never got one. Burkhead, left side, plows into the end zone, and the Patriots have won the AFC Championship in overtime. For a 49th season, Kansas City's Super Bowl dreams would remain just that. That was one of the lower points of my life, you know, even though it was the AFC Championship. You know what, that, uh, that's probably going to get me going every single time I think about it. The Chiefs' first-year starting quarterback was consoled by the legend who dashed his title hopes. Obviously, I, I'm upset, trying to go back to the locker room. We kind of crossed paths, and he pretty much just talked about how much respect he had of, of how I competed that I was doing everything the right way, and he told me to kind of keep that up. And so it was, it was, a, it was an awesome experience uh, to be in that game, and it was cool, for him, cool of him to do that in that moment. In his 19th season, Tom Brady earned a sixth Super Bowl title. But 2018 was best remembered as the year that showed what the NFL would look like beyond Brady. And that new image was Patrick Mahomes. When you get opportunity in this game, you make a play. Yeah. Yeah. Man, about it, you make a play. Few made more of their first opportunity than Mahomes. Just 23 years old, he became the second quarterback ever to throw for 5,000 yards and 50 touchdowns in a season. Hey, you, baby. Can't be you. Can't make plays for you. Let's go. Seeing his confidence grow, throwing ridiculous passes uh, that he probably should have never even been thinking about doing. Don't look sidearm. That's incredible. Oh my gosh, how do you not like watching him play? He went out there and absolutely balled. Batman's left-handed! Scrambling Mahomes who can throw from every angle imaginable. With Pat, it's coming every single which way, man. It's like you don't know if you're getting a screwball or a slider. It's like he's on the mound and you're kind of just guessing which pitch he's going to throw. Pitching is the perfect analogy because baseball is where the world first learned of Mahomes' powerful delivery. It came from always just being around the baseball field. It really was like t-ball. Uh, I just remember throwing the ball and it ended up hitting with a kid like right between the eyes and broke his glasses and, and everything. And so they told me I either had to roll at the first base or I had to play first base. My dad wasn't a fan of me rolling it over there, so I ended up playing first base. With his dad, former Major League pitcher Pat Mahomes as his teacher, pro baseball fields became valuable classrooms. Alex Rodriguez, Derek Jeter, guys that were literally superstars and on top of the world. And what really stuck with me is they'd be the guys that were getting there the earliest. They'd be the guys that were hitting off a tee, which I hated doing when I was six years old. And I think that's really translated to me because in order to be great, you have to be great every single day, year in and year out. The level of Mahomes' greatness in 2018 can be summed up in three letters. In the 2018 AP Most Valuable Player is... Patrick Mahomes! I'm truly honored to win the NFL's Most Valuable Player Award. This is just the beginning. We have a long ways to go. Thank you. In the offseason, he continued to pull off improbable feats with his arm. Ending the Chiefs' 50-year Super Bowl drought seemed like something he could knock out of the park. about trying to set the mindset of what we're going to do the entire season, set the mindset of going out there, playing fast. 
you saw that we're not just one player. It, it's, it's everybody on this entire team that can make plays, and I feel like that's what you need out of championship teams is guys that can step up and make plays and their numbers called. A deep post to McCole Hardman for his first National Football League touchdown. Guys were ready to go out there and just attack, and you know what? It's uh, it's It's contagious. In two wins to start the 2019 season, the Chiefs scored 68 points. Mahomes threw for over 800 yards. Defenses dreaded facing them. If you can't beat them, join them. I felt like I had made the right decision to come here. You know, I could feel the energy. To be honest, I never played with an offense quite like the one in Kansas City. Yeah, those guys are a little bit different. That's a hell of a catch! That's a hell of a catch! I'm going to talk to the all day, brother. How you doing, Melba? Thanks for the game ball. I want to make you get you to the That's all for you, sweetie. Chiefs fan Melba Mills waited 100 years to attend her first game. One of the few people alive for all of the NFL's first century, she didn't want to miss seeing the game's future in person. The two hottest young quarterbacks in the NFL showdown for a throwdown. Lamar Jackson versus Pat Mahomes today in Kansas City. Obviously, you understand that the Ravens, I mean, we knew then they were going to be a great football team. They had a lot of great players, uh, including Lamar Jackson at quarterback. We knew that it was almost like a little measuring stick of where we were at. With two of the game's most exciting young quarterbacks on the same field, it was more than just the teams being measured. Lamar Jackson, an incredible athletic ability. Personally for him, I know how much he competes at trying to be the best, man. And he might not tell everybody, but you, you can tell by how hard he works and how much he, uh, he takes notes on what everybody else is achieving. So I'm sure mentally he amped it up just a little bit. A week after Kansas City scored 28 second quarter points to beat the Raiders, they would score 23 in the second against Baltimore. a dagger right into the midsection of the Ravens. Through a 4-0 and start, it felt like the Chiefs offense had an answer for everything. Throws it sidearm. He's got Kelsey, flips it off to Shady McCoy. A Kelsey flip to Shady McCoy for 32 yards. While Patrick Mahomes continued to leave everyone questioning reality. Mahomes. do this. You can't escape. You can't make these plays. You can't make these throws. Patrick Mahomes, just stop it. We haven't seen this. The Chiefs offense had all the moves. Maybe not all of them. Are you, are you right here? You have a right here. Boom. They come back and then you do that. Back-to-back -back losses showed that the defense lacked rhythm. Their offense was very, very dynamic. Defensively, I don't think we started the season like that. You know, we were really lackadaisical, giving up 200 rushing yards per game, you know, not being able to make plays on the ball. I think that's why they gave Patrick Mahomes all that money. <laughs> Before the 2019 season, Tyron Matthew got a big contract of his own. The Chiefs made the free agent the highest paid safety in the NFL. But coming to Kansas City was about more than money. I think it was more so me understanding that this was my moment to kind of take advantage of who I wanted to be going forward. Getting to his future required understanding his past. My biological father is in prison for murder. You know, I think not having my biological parents in my life, having to live with my uncle and my aunt, it made me strong. You know, as I look back, um, as a kid, I didn't always feel strong. And I think football gave me a chance to be a part of a family <laughs> that wasn't necessarily, you know, out of whack. But there were missteps in his search for that football family. Once a Heisman Trophy finalist at LSU, he was dismissed from the team before his junior season. He spent time in jail on drug charges 
before being drafted by the Arizona Cardinals in 2013. Ain't nothing like when your back against the wall, dog. Ain't nothing like it, dog. Every season was cut short because of injury. You know, I finished three seasons on IR. The injuries and, you know, obviously the things that I had dealt with before I even got to the NFL, um, you know, all those things was, was starting to kind of compound themselves. And um, for me, I felt like I was losing um, the love for football. Rejuvenated after a season in Houston, Matthew finally found the family he was looking for in Kansas City. New defensive coordinator Steve Spagnolo understood the importance of family dinner. Coach Spag's wife, she cooked dinner for me, Hitchens, and Frank Clark. Coach told us that we were the guys that he was expecting to lead this group. Him inviting us into his home, you know, not every coach does that. Um, so, you know, he began to, you know, get real personal with us. Is your dad, did you say your dad was in jail? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Did he talk to him at all? I talked to him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to return the favor. Championship swagger! Championship swagger, dog. Him being the leader and the, and the front runner over there, being the voice of reason and the, and the motivator. Him and Frank Clark. I'm a, I'm a winner. I like winning. I want them to win. Chris Jones. The culture shifted into a whole new direction. In Denver, the defense brought championship swagger. The defense picks up the team. The defense of Kansas City had to change things up, and change things up they have. But the biggest blow wouldn't come from Kansas City's defense. Fourth down, less than a yard. It was a play that I asked Coach Reed to call it because I knew I could get the first down. Obviously, I did the quarterback sneak. I got the first down. I knew something was wrong. I just didn't want to move. And so I was laying on my center. He's trying to get up. He's like, Pat, get off me. I'm like, dude, I can't move. Like, I'm not moving right now. I look down, and my knee is in the side of my leg. Seeing his kneecap and where it was, I mean, I, that, was, uh, that was one of the most gruesome things I had ever seen. Immediately, you think, like, hopefully he can play football again. I was on the ground just kind of sitting there, season flashing before my eyes, like, man, I'm about to be out for the season. The doctor came, put my knee back in really quickly by just straightening it. The craziest part to me was I remember being in the locker room watching the game on the TV, and after they told me I couldn't come back in the game, and, and uh, Brett Veach was down there with me, and, and he, he said, this will be a crazy story to tell when we win the Super Bowl. Take care of yourself this weekend. Enjoy yourself. Be smart. We got more to go, baby. Hell yes, yeah, sir. So Chiefs on three. One, two, three. Chiefs. Now let's go to Matt Moore. His last start was Christmas Eve, 2016. Matty Moore, man, you can't help but just smile and kind of laugh about the situation. He'll even tell you he was just out drinking beers and being a high school football coach uh, <laughs> and got the call from Andy Reid to come and be the backup for the Chiefs uh, about one week before the season started. Hey, Matt, don't peek too soon, man. Hey! Woo! Always good advice. Matty Moore, have a day. A dislocated knee sidelined Patrick Mahomes for two weeks. That meant Matt Moore would get the start on an NFL holiday. It's National Tight End Day. Nice. Yeah. Moore couldn't deny one of the game's elite tight ends a chance to celebrate on his big day. He hauls it in, and the Chiefs get a 29-yard touchdown pass. That's why you're the best, boy. Come on, boy. The best. You know that? Complete. Pain. You know what we're doing? In 2019, Travis Kelsey caught his 500th pass faster than any tight end in NFL history. He also became the only tight end with four straight thousand-yard seasons. Those are receiver-type skills from a tight end. Let's go! No! Few players have more fun than Kelsey. He came close to missing out on the joy he's found playing in the NFL. Made a few mistakes in college. Um, weren't the last ones I made and certainly weren't the first. To be kicked out of the University of Cincinnati, it was probably the ultimate low of my life. With his football career in limbo, he worked as a healthcare telemarketer. It wasn't exactly his life's calling. 
It was an interesting time in my life. I got to see a lot of uh, different opinions come across the table, but I would much rather be doing the things that I want to do in life than the things that I don't want to do, which is listen to people from Kentucky, Southern Ohio, and Eastern Indiana talk about how Medicaid is something that the United States doesn't need. Kelsey's closest ally in returning to football was a college teammate and future NFL center, who also just happened to be his brother, Jason. When I got in trouble, he went up to the coaches and tried to get them to give me a, a second chance, and sure enough, it happened. But he would always hold me accountable to making sure that our family can be proud of both of us. Family helped Travis find his way to the NFL. Patrick Mahomes' DNA played a role in his return, just three weeks after suffering what initially looked like a season-ending knee injury. My mom is, and my sister and my brother, we're all like, and me, we're all like double-jointed. And so that they think that might have helped it when it came out. It didn't tear or break anything. And when they put it back in, it didn't tear or break anything. And then I was able to come back so quickly. Superhuman. I don't know what it is. I think he, uh, I think he does that as his party trick now. He just takes his kneecap and puts it to the side of his knee. Mahomes jumps in the air. The jump pass by Mahomes. Mahomes' magic wouldn't be enough to stop the Titans. The defense continued to struggle, and the Chiefs' record fell to 6-4. and four. Up until that point, I still hadn't gotten comfortable in the system. I can remember Spags, you know, personally challenging me. Um, and I think he challenged everybody, well, all of his leaders on defense, that it was time for us to turn it up a notch. I truly believe that Mexico City was the start of the push for us defensively. Intercepted by Matthew at the 30 tie. Ron Matthew. 24 seconds left. Chiefs by seven. Frank Clark coming for him. A fade route right side. It's intercepted. Intercepted. Dirty Dan Sorensen picks it up. And the Chiefs shut the gate on Phillip Rivers. They hoped to keep the momentum going in an AFC Championship rematch. We needed to beat that team, especially coming off the AFC Championship game. Obviously, I understood what happened the year before, so it was personal for everybody. If they could, they would have challenged the Patriots to a game in street clothes. They almost had no other choice. It was an interesting morning for the Chiefs, and because of a high school football game here yesterday, they couldn't unload their equipment until 8 this morning. That's when they realized they left a large crate with about 35 of the players' bags on the plane. Well, fortunately, the plane was in Newark, and they rushed the bags over. It got here about 2.30. Better late than never. That was the 2019 Chiefs. Off tackle run, it's a flea flicker. And Brady will throw it. He's got Edelman to the near side. He catches it. Touchdown, New England. We're going to have to continue to overcome all of Edelman. Because they ain't going to give us the benefit of the doubt. Four-man rush, a delayed rush. Mahomes throwing off the back foot. He wants McCall. Harvard. He's got the catch at the 15. Jukes at the 10. Touchdown. That was one of the first times I really, in my mind, said, you know what, offensively, defensively, special teams, we came together as a group and, and found a way to win. Kansas City Chiefs absolutely stifling the New England Patriots in their house with 20 unanswered points. Chiefs 23, Patriots 16. Rashad Breland, at the end of the game, made one of the biggest plays of the season. Takes the snap, Chiefs spring pressure. Left side throw, and it's broken up in the end zone! Knocked down by Brashad Breeland. The Chiefs hold! Your Kansas City Chiefs are the AFC West champions again. Get out of my back pocket! Holy Tony! We set ourselves up by winning the West, but we knew that there's more meat on the bone, man. There's more things that we have to go out there and achieve uh, to get to the ultimate prize, which is the Super Bowl. In week 17, a win against San Diego wouldn't be enough to secure a playoff bye. Also needed, the Patriots' loss at home to the 4-11 and 11 Dolphins.
right. Meanwhile, Miami has first and goal down by four. I'm getting confused. What game are you calling? I'm calling both games. Touchdown, Miami, to take a lead with 24 seconds to go. We're in a timeout and out of nowhere. Fans are screaming and everybody in the stands is going crazy. It was truly like a, a movie moment where you like, it's a surreal feeling of everything just happening perfectly. We got a vibe, man. <laughs> With just one home playoff win since 1993, black clouds seem to hover over Kansas City in January. The Chiefs started the 2019 postseason in a fog. Houston strikes first! And the Texans block it! It's loose at the 10-yard line. Lottie to the right side. He's in! Tyree Killer fumbles the ball at the 7-yard line, and the Texans got it. Throw over the middle. Got a man. Fells! Touchdown, Houston! Up three TDs to nothing. Everything that could go wrong did go wrong. Oh, man, this is embarrassing, but we got three quarters. <laughs> it wasn't a great feeling to have, but we knew it was all self-inflicted. Let's do something special. Let's do something special. They already count us out. One play at a time, do something special. Nicole Hartman set it off. Nicole Hartman takes it at the one-yard line. He gets to the 20, 25, 30. He's got a block. He's at the 40 on the angle, midfield. And once we had that momentum switch of, the, of a good kick return, our offense went out there and we just exploded, man. Damian Williams, touchdown! Steps up, being pressured, fires it late, caught, Kelsey dies! Touchdown! The Kansas City Chiefs have scored two touchdowns in a span of two minutes. In 49 seconds. I don't care what they say. We are dominating them on every single play. We just keep dominating. The Chiefs set a franchise record, scoring 177 second quarter points in 2019. Against the Texans, they became the first team in NFL history to trail by 24 in the second before leading at halftime. Ten game minutes ago. It was 24 to nothing, Houston, and the Chiefs have the lead. I love having Patrick Mahomes on my team. As Pat began to complete his passes and as Tra Travis began to catch his balls, it was the guys that we always count on to lift us who were lifting us. Telekinetic. That might be the best way to describe Mahomes and Kelsey's connection. A 28-yard catch. Mahomes and Kelsey do it again. I, I, don't, I don't understand how you know what I'm doing. I, I knew I you were going to turn. I was, I was, there was nothing telling you I was going to do that. What? And the ball was in that's the air before that's I did That's what I wanted you to do. And I was like, ah! I was running a out route. I didn't see the ball in flight after my first three or five steps into the out route and just said, you know what, let me try and get open going this way. And as soon as I turned around, it was either going to hit me in the face or I was going to catch it. We had never practiced that. That was something that was never supposed to happen. And I threw it, and he catches it in stride and runs and makes a big play happen. We built up the chemistry to me to trust him to do stuff like that. Let us stick together and fight. But like he said, this ain't over. We're coming back on Monday. We're getting in there. We're making sure that our mind is right and we're physically right to go out there and win at, at our home AFC Championship this week. And we're ready to go for the AFC Championship game for the second straight year. The opportunity is here for the Kansas City Chiefs again. Everybody was excited that we were back in the AFC Championship game trying to find a way to, to change what happened the year before. Championship swagger, baby. Just destiny. I promise y'all, we deserve to get beers. We play for each other, dog. Our yeah. audience of one, the team, dog. I feel like this team really handled its fair share of adversity. So in our minds, it was no doubt. You know, we knew where we were headed to win the Lamar Hunt Trophy. Earning the trophy named after the Chiefs founder, would require yet another comeback. Comes to Derrick Henry, off tackle left, touchdown Tennessee. Shades of last week. No! Come on! Really? 
Down 17-7, the Chiefs had that second quarter feeling. That was bad news for the Titans. Now throw left side, Tyreek Hill! Touchdown, Kansas City! Halftime approached. That left just enough time for Patrick Mahomes to provide yet another memorable second quarter moment. Mahomes moving to his left laterally, chased, holding it, and gets out of bounds and up the sideline. He's not out of bounds yet. He's at the 10, inside the 10, he dives, touchdown, Kansas City, a remarkable acrobatic scramble, maybe the best play yet. Mahomes' epic feat of stamina was born out of mere exhaustion. We had a two minute drive, so everybody's a little tired at that moment because we had been kind of driving on the field. We ran the play and a few plays before I'd ran to the sideline and the guy, I think it was a little tired, kind of given up and just kind of like thrown his hands and like kind of barely pushed me out of bounds. And so I was running and at the last moment I was like, man, I'm just gonna try to go for it. And I was running down the sideline, and I remember I was like, we have a timeout. Let's try to cut it back and see if I can get close as I can to the end zone. I almost got stripped. I actually almost fumbled the ball, but I was able to hold on to it, dive in the end zone, find a way to score, and then it was try to find oxygen as quickly as possible after that. At that point in the game, for him to pull something out of his hat, like a magic trick, something that the NFL hadn't seen of him yet, to be able to make a play on his feet like that, in arguably the biggest game of his career at that point, man. It was uh, it was pretty special, man. That's championship swagger, boy! That's what I like, boy! That play is the definition of championship swagger. Let's go do our job, dog. For us, it was, you know, finish. Stop Derrick Henry. Henry is hit and taken down! I was glad we got the opportunity to show the world that we were a much better defense. They're down to the last gasp of oxygen. 128 to go in the game. Fourth and six. Tannehill under pressure. Still moving to his right. Frank Clark chasing. Knocks it down. Tannehill goes down. Frank Clark has just given Kansas City its first trip to the Super Bowl in 50 years. No! It's been 50 years, man. This is not about me, man. It's been about the people of Kansas City. They, they deserve it way more than us, no doubt. For the fans that have went through the years of, of down and the years of almost to be able to get them to the Super Bowl, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was really cool. Look how many people are happy because of Lamar. Oh, he that, did this. So it, it's the best. This organization isn't here without Lamar Hunt. You can feel every single game how much these fans appreciate that and how much it meant to Clark Hunt and the Hunt family to finally bring home their father's name. It was definitely a cool feeling to be a part of that, man. No one, <laughs> I'm a passionate guy, sorry. I, um, I absolutely, uh, I loved every bit of being on that stage for them, that's for sure. the Chiefs and Niners, the former of which arrived yesterday afternoon in Hawaiian shirts in honor of their head coach, Andy Reid. The Hawaiian shirts, obviously we were going to Miami. Coach Reid wears the Tommy Bahama shirts. You know, it's all about trying to represent him in the right way, trying to make him, you know, feel that, that love that, that we most certainly feel from him. What he means to this team, what he means to this organization, what he means to football, uh, how many guys he's helped along the way. And going into that year for him not to have a ring was unfathomable. A guy that amazing at his job, it put a chip on everybody's shoulder in the building to go out there and get one for him. If getting Andy Reid his first Super Bowl ring as a head coach wasn't enough motivation, a classic story from one who has multiple rings hammered it home. Jimmy Johnson came up to us, uh, I think it was the Thursday before the Super Bowl. Let the mind control the body, not the he body. He told us the story of a two-by-four. If you put a two-by-four on the ground 
and ask every player in the NFL to walk it, everybody's going to be able to walk it. Uh, but if you put it 20 feet in the sky, all of a sudden, uh, fear comes in. These outside distractions start to get into your head, and you almost have doubt that you can't walk down a two-by-four anymore. And he was like, don't let the Super Bowl be 20 feet in the sky. Let it be exactly what it is and what you know it to be, which is just a walk down a line. Resonated because that's all it really is, man. It's just a whole bunch of hype for a game that you've been playing since you were a little kid. Jimmy Johnson said it best, baby. Like we're walking on the two by four, whether it's on the ground or 10 feet in the air. At the end of the day, we've been doing this our whole life. All we have to do is believe in each other and play for each other, dog. We need energy. We need oneness. We need to be remembered. Have a great team. Let's forget about the good one. Let's have a great one. Be you. Make one to remember, coach. The Chiefs came out looking to reverse their trend of slow postseason starts. Third and 11 at the 15-yard line, scrambling to the right. He'll run at the 10. He's at the 5. And lost the football out of bounds. Hey, hey 2-0. That's a good-ass hit, though. Patrick is up and took a lick. I was trying to get the first down. I wanted to slide. He's always been a little shaky in those situations. Doesn't know when to quite slide or when to dive. <laughs> Which is, it's, I love to joke with him about it. What happened? You fumbled, you fumbled it backwards. Oh, it's, it's, not the it's not where I was at? No, no, because it, it went out backwards. The fourth and one presented the perfect time to pull out a play tucked deep in the recesses of Andy Reid's mind. Hey, it's going to be shift the Rose Bowl right parade. Oh, wow. be, hey, 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 shift the Rose Bowl right parade. I think Coach Reed looked it up. I was like, something like 1948. It was something there, the 1948, whatever, Rose Bowl, and I think it was like UCLA versus somebody. I don't know. It was it was a long time. It was in some a black and white film that he had pulled up for us on like the first day of OTAs. And we had it in every single game plan and practiced it every single week of the entire year and never ran it. So I'm like, we're never going to run this play. And, of course, we get in the perfect situation in the Super Bowl, and we shift and we run it. Shift! Now they spin around. They send one of the running backs in motion. It's a direct snap, and it goes to Williams, who runs over the guard on the hash mark. He got to the two. He squirms his way near the goal line, first and goal. I thought we scored at the time. I was so hyped. Goal! 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 All four in the backfield spun around at one time. They looked like the four tops. Andy Reid doing some special things right now. It's just crazy. You practice one play like a thousand times and you run it one time in the Super Bowl in a crucial situation and, and it works. A more conventional quarterback keeper gave the Chiefs a first quarter lead for the first time in the postseason. And Kansas City with a stellar drive on a fourth and one converting. The 49ers defense happily obliged. The relentless push by the 49ers. Now hit, and he fumbles the football. You got to give props to the San Francisco defense for presenting a challenge that uh, it seemed like we weren't ready for at the time. We were making mistakes that we don't usually make. Poison! Making the wrong reads. There was guys running open that I wasn't throwing to. That two by four felt like it was 100 feet in the air. Fires it down, feel it's intercepted. The first postseason pick thrown by Patrick Mahomes. Slant pattern, incomplete. Is it picked off? It's picked off off the deflection. Second interception for Patrick Mahomes on consecutive drives. Second one I felt worse about just because we were already in field goal range and we we were down 10 points. I got you, I'm good, I got you. And I was like, well, you've already thrown two interceptions. Only thing you could do is just go out there and just play now. Nothing worse that could happen. Anytime you've got one five on your team, you've got a chance. You've got to find a way to score or the game's going to be over. Two teams have come back from 10-point deficits in the fourth quarter to win a Super Bowl. And that's where we stand right now. I like this. This is what I like. Believe, baby, believe, baby. Do something special, baby. If you gave us that inch of room uh, to gain momentum, man, we were going to take it. 7-17 to go in Super Bowl 54. Mahomes 
gunning it. Right side in a diving catch made. Tyreek Hill at the 48-yard line of San Francisco. We had thrown the ball, and I thought we, I didn't know if it was going to place or not. An official review gave Patrick Mahomes and offensive coordinator Eric Bieniemy a chance to discuss a potential next play. Do we have time to run walls? The last few drives we had talked about running walls. We thought it was going to be a good play. It was going to be open. The first down or no? After reviewing the play, the ball hit the ground. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be third and 15. Then Trey Wright, three jet chip. Walls, wide funnel. Then Trey, you get open. Both y'all get open. It's such a long developing play. With that pass rush, we're going to have to have a great protection. Shotgun snap, drops back five, got the block. They come on the side, he winds up, he throws a long pass. Wide open hill. And Mahomes guns it for 44 yards. You don't have too many plays for third and 15 in the playbook, but uh, luckily enough, uh, we had one. We have a little bit of protection to give me some time. Uh, a little underthrown to Tyree. But he was able to make the big play happen. Wow. What a play. I mean, I don't think any other coach, quarterback, and wide receiver could have pulled that off. It's like the perfect trio at the perfect time. That's what the Chiefs offense is all about. That one huge play, third and 15, may have changed this entire game. It's funny looking back because we knew it was momentum, but we didn't know that was going to be the turning point in the game. We still had a mentality of we're down two scores. We got to get this ball in the end zone. After three and a half quarters lying dormant, the sting of a wasp woke the sleeping offensive beast. Touchdown, Kansas City! 6-13 to go in the game. The Chiefs have life. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is over. It was probably the oldest play that we have in the book. Nobody covered me, man. It was wide open. Obviously, it was high expectations coming into the season, you know, whether or not defensively we would hold up. A year earlier, they couldn't finish. But the 2019 Chiefs defense closed with championship swagger. Frank the Shark Clark! They have stepped up and they have delivered for Chiefs Kingdom. I felt like at that moment, the whole world knew that the Kansas City Chiefs actually do play defense. Hey, we're going to need one more. There's 125 to play in the game. The 49ers have three timeouts left. This game is not over. We need a first down. Cover that ball. Stay in bounds. Let's get it. I still don't think Damian Williams gets enough credit for what he brought. He's someone that I truly believe helped mold this offense into what it was. An offense that had one big play left in Super Bowl 54. Damian Williams runs to immortality! Kansas City has won their first Super Bowl in 50 years! And the Chiefs kingdom has firmly planted its flag on top of football's highest that's awesome. That's awesome, Coach. I was just so happy for Coach Reed. 
For me, it was about getting him that trophy and winning that championship first. can't say enough about Big Red, man. It's been amazing ever since the jump, and uh, to, to go from where we started to the Super Bowl champions, Coach Reed set that standard. We did it, baby. We did it. I love you. My whole entire life of, of taking me around clubhouses or my mom taking me to, to tournaments all around the state of Texas or wherever it is. For them to be there and uh, be a part of that championship, all that time and all that hard work, determination, same thing, paying off, it, it's really cool. Hey, sweet mamas. I wasn't always a part of my mom and dad's experiences. And so I think having that opportunity to, to share with my kids, it was everything. I talked to my dad probably a couple of days after the Super Bowl, and you know, it's been a lot of people who've given me second chances, and I realized that he's a better person too. So not only did I win the Super Bowl, but I kind of got my dad back in my life. So, you know, it was, it's special. Papa! I'm out of big guy! Oh, my God. Oh, so happy for you. You've worked so hard all your life. Never, ever really got the recognition you deserve. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> tell us nothing up for a big time. Yeah. I mean, it's Pops, man. That's yeah, always believe him in me, big guy. <laughs> I've had a lot of lows that he's been there, and I've been ashamed to even look him in the eyes, but, uh, That point in time, man, it was uh, there was nothing but love, and I uh, I appreciate him for always being there. And I'll tell you what, you got you one marriage with me forever. You can't get rid of me now, big guy. <laughs> this team, everybody's linked together forever, man. And uh, if you ask Coach Reed, I, I bet you he didn't know he was going to get married twice. <laughs> story that I'll be able to tell forever, but uh, I'm still at the beginning of my career, and I'm still trying to go out there and get more. You're married to me forever, man. <laughs> I cherish every moment with y'all, and I promise you everybody here feels the exact same way. World champions.